Okay, so for week seven of the class, um, we're going to answer the question, have you heard of the expression, if a tree falls in the woods and you're not around to hear it, did it make a sound? Something like that. I, I don't think I messed it up. It's something like that, isn't it? That's right. Something like that. So, uh, like that, one of those. So, <clears throat> the point is, if something happens and no one's paying attention to it, did it really happen or did, did it matter? So the thing about for us, okay, we're concerned with making websites. We're concerned with making a basic or advanced kind of website. We're concerned with making a, an e-commerce powered website. And that's great if we make an amazing looking one in WordPress or any sort of software and we add a lot of bells and whistles and make it really nice. But no one visits it. No one sees your product. No one buys your product. No one knows you exist. So. This week is going to be a focus on a different side of modern web design, which is not just designing the website, working on the website and such. It's what are you doing besides your website? Are you doing any digital marketing? Are you doing any other of these webmaster um, aspects that you have to do besides your website? So if you haven't seen it yet on the week seven, um, there's various goals that we're going to do. Just a concept of digital marketing. Um, no matter how good a website looks and functions, if no one visits, it might as well not even exist. So we're going to use social media as a tool to get the word out, as a tool to let people know my website exists, I have products, or I have whatever my website is about, come and check it out, come and buy the thing, come and subscribe, whatever. So social media. We're going to uh, focus on using Twitter as the assignment. There's many social networks out there. They're all relevant. They're all valid. It's all about finding your target audience. Um, they've all got pros and cons. But just for the amount of time that we have, we're going to focus on Twitter. But the concepts that we learn about using Twitter for business effectively will also apply to using Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or any social network in a professional way. Because how many of you have ever heard of that website called Twitter? Trick question. Of course you have. How many of you have heard of Facebook? Of course you have. Everyone's heard of all of these things. Now, how many of you uh, have a personal or business Twitter account? Okay. How many of you have a personal or business Facebook account? Okay. How many of you have a personal or business Instagram account? So there's a range of people using the different networks. So that's the thing that whichever one you use is a valid option for your business. Um, and when you kind of get good at one, it uh, helps you understand how the others work. Maybe one is more image focused, maybe one is more image focused, maybe one is more spur of the moment, maybe one is more thoughtful. But they're all about creating content to market your business, to make people aware that it exists, to come to your website to buy your product, or do whatever it is you're trying to do on your website. So we're going to look at Twitter, setting up a profile, talking about hashtags, creating content for the right audience, using something called TweetDeck as a power user. And the things that you'll need to do in general are you're going to create an account for Twitter, for, for uh, Twitter for your business. Again, if you've used any of these social networks before for personal stuff, you're not going to use that one for the assignment here. You don't want to mix up, most likely you don't want to mix up your business stuff with your personal stuff. You can create these for free, and we'll talk about setting this up. But you'll need to create an account for your business, plus other details. Uh, you'll need to create content, which is you'll need to use it within now to the deadline, which is next week. This is going to be an assignment that you're going to do on your own throughout the week to create content, 10 tweets at least, and then using TweetDeck itself. And um, so basically, the assignment again all the details are in there exactly what you need to do well I don't know what this means I don't know what that is I don't know how to do that we'll cover this stuff in the lecture in a moment but you'll need a Twitter account you'll need to modify the basic profile uh, set up TweetDeck we'll, we'll cover these today uh, you'll need to have these things set up about your profile you'll need to create this content and here again okay 10 tweets that doesn't mean do 10 tweets before you leave today <laughs> That means you have a week to do it and one 
per day, at least that's seven days, actually I think eight, seven days, okay, that's seven tweets, and then yeah, you could do two on that day and three on here, whatever. The thing is not just to get it all done in an hour before you leave, you, you need to think about different days to actually spread out the content. We'll cover hashtags as well, at least two different hashtags. Um, I, I guess maybe to spell it out, I don't mean every tweet needs to have two hashtags. I'm just like, uh, once we cover the concept of hashtags, just use hashtags. Like, I don't want to really lock it down like this has to have two and make sure it's on Tuesday and all like that. Just kind of like think about in a logical way because most of the homeworks and activities that I do in most of my classes isn't just like busy work to like, hey, do this and you get points. It's like hopefully you're seeing that you learn this stuff to do it in the real world. And hopefully, even though it's just an assignment, you're applying these things or thinking about using them in the real world. So if you feel like, okay, I'm going to use two hashtags in one tweet and I'm done, okay, I guess, 10 points. But does it really make sense about uh, using it in the real world? Maybe I wanted to use one hashtag today and two tomorrow and then none, none on Thursday and another like that. So we'll see how that goes. We'll set up TweetDeck as a power user's interface. Uh, you'll you'll feel like you know in one of those like cyber hacking movies where you're got all these columns of data floating around everywhere and you're monitoring the whole situation. So tweet deck, we'll get to that. And then the grading, it's ten points. It's due next uh, Tuesday at the start of class. We're gonna change it up a little bit next week when we come back. We're just gonna do the grading first, um, and then uh, we'll do the main lecture of that day. And then ten points in total. So some points for this, this, and that. And that's how your grade's going to be. Well, before you can do any of this, we need to learn a few things. And um, over on the toolkit, for example, I've got some relevant links, a nice article on Wikipedia. Um, raise your hand if you've heard of more than five different social networks. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, that's five. Raise your hand if you've heard of 10 different social networks. MySpace. MySpace is still around, yep. Is that still around? <laughs> it is. I think Justin Timberlake owns it. Um, yeah, so we can think of 10. Well, this article has a list of like uh, more than 100 social networks. And the point is, well, why don't I just get on the big ones, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? Well, even deciding what the big ones are or the relevant ones are, you're going to think about like maybe five to 10 of them. Do I need to be on them all? Maybe yes, maybe no. It's about finding your target audience. And the reason I have a list right here of some of these networks that you've never heard of or that I've never heard of, how many of you have heard of the network Peach? Nope. What about Mastodon? Nope. So I can name a few that were like a flash in the pan. There was a, net, there was a social network called Yo, Y-O. And the way you communicated in it was giving each other yo's. That's it. You talk to each other by a yo. You like something, you got a yo. You shared a photo, it, you got a yo. Like, that's it. That was what they were, that was what their big thing was about. Is it even listed here anymore? Um, let's see here. V, T, U, W. Uh, it's probably on the other list at the top. List of um, defunct social networks. List of networks that have, uh, that have existed and then gone away. Um, just out of curiosity there, what did there used to be? Taltopia, Zoopy, Yik Yak, I kind of remember that vaguely. Retch, um, Stick'em, hey, I remember that one. So there's all of these um, networks that exist. And the point of it is maybe um, you read a little description of it and what it's about. That one seems to be a focus on politics in Germany. Okay, maybe that's my audience, my product is for this target audience. So maybe I want to get a net I want to get an account at one of these networks to target my business better to a particular network. So um, even though you might say, yeah, well, okay, Facebook, that's a big one, and it has whatever amount of users. That means two billion users. This one's got two million. Uh, actually let's skip that one. Uh, Flickster, 63 million. Um, so maybe I'll just go to the biggest one. Again, if you, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. 
because what if I go to the one that really focuses on business to business? This has only got 850,000 users, but maybe in there I, I find the 200 users that will help keep my business afloat. So that's just information for you there about different social networks. Check that out on your own. Then a link over to Twitter. So it's got 330 million users. It's been around at least 10 years. It's real time. It reaches a lot of an audience. It's very direct. We'll talk about TweetDeck, which is an advanced way to use Twitter. There's a great link over here about tips on creating your profile for business. Because a lot of us have used social media for years and we think we know it. And we probably do as a personal tool to connect with friends and family. But there's uh, some other nuances about using these networks for business. So there's a link there you can check out. There's another good video there at some point that you can look at for um, basics of uh, Twitter and other uh, marketing from GoDaddy. And then something called the social media calendar or the editorial calendar, which is basically a plan. Most of us, if we use social media, like it's spontaneous, and let me take a photo of this great sandwich I just had and share it. Or let me send my friend a, a, a message, what are you doing today? It's very spontaneous. But for businesses, we often have to plan it a little bit more. Simply like every Monday, I'm going to share a photo of my product with you know smiling people holding it so that I can convince people to buy it. Uh, and every Saturday, I'm going to share a short video where I talk about it, give a free tip of whatever. So that's a social media calendar or an editorial cal calendar. You have a plan uh, to use social media on a regular basis because all of these networks, whichever one you end up picking, uh, are very effective when you're active with it. If I created my account and haven't used it in, you know, uh, three months, it may as well not even exist because people aren't going to find you, you don't have new content, you're not showing something new or interesting to people. So having a goal of using it on a regular basis is a good one in order to stay relevant. So these are some links. And what we'll do together is we'll... Um, Welcome to the journey. We'll, um, we'll go and create an account together, actually. So let's do this. Uh, if you already have a Twitter account for business, you can use it. But I'm going to do a little lecture about setting this up for brand new users. And you can make as many Twitter accounts as you want. It's just tied to an email address. So if you have any email address, you'll be able to create this. If you have a pre-existing account, you could use it if you want. You could use it for the grading if you want. But there's a button over here to sign up. So we'll do so. We could ask for a name, phone, or use an email instead if you want, plus a birthday. Because uh, you need to be, I believe, at least 13 years old to use most of these networks. So we get a spot about the name, the name of our business. So I'm going to make up here Victor's Bakery. I have up to 50 characters to write here. And we will see that oftentimes most networks have two names. This sort of like um, official long version of your name and then the shorter username. We'll get to this in a moment. What I mean about this is I want eventually my system seems to be pretty unresponsive but let's see so um, we'll see this eventually that I want to have the address twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery that username here or that URL address is on a different screen Many networks have two versions of the name, which is a little confusing. And oftentimes, this one of the web address is the one that might already be taken, might have already been claimed. Most of these networks have been around at least 10 years. And if I'm barely getting the great idea to get my business on any of these networks this year, maybe that name was taken a year ago or nine years ago. So I have to settle for another name. 
we'll get to that. Right now I'm putting the name here, switch this to an email. Um, let's see what email can I use here? Put some date. Um, you want to put a date that's at least the uh, at least 13 years. Um, you know, if your business was just founded this year, you don't want to put that because it'll say one-year-olds cannot get on Twitter. So you want to put here some sort of uh, date. You know, January 1st, 1980. Very generic date right there. So I'm going to put that in and press next. So there's a sign up to agree, terms of service and all of that. Click sign up on that. We sent you a code. So the thing about any of this social networking is that it's very easy to create an account for us, but it's also very easy, unfortunately, for spammers to create an account. Um, those sorts of accounts that are, you know, they're, they're gonna scam you and such. So it's asking for an email address for you for it to get verified that you're real. So I need to take a detour to go um, check that email. There was also the option to put a phone number. If you want to put a phone number, it would send you a text message, I believe, to verify that you're a real person. In any event, if you're not able to do some of this right now, uh, again, you're going to have a whole uh, week to um, to do this, so hopefully you can at least get it set up before you leave, and then the rest you can do at your own pace. So it sent me an email. I got the verification number. I need to make up a password here. Part of the grading criteria that you'll have for this um, assignment is that you need to create the account and also set up the basic aspects of it, such as a logo and header and stuff. I don't have those graphics handy to actually do it, but eventually it's going to ask me to put a, a photo there or the logo of my business. And if you notice, this is a this is a round shape. So if my logo is some sort of horizontal or vertical size, and I put it and I upload it here, it'll probably crop it in a weird way. So think about that for your branding on these various social networks. Depending on the length or width of your logo, it may get cropped. So you may have to use something like Photoshop or Paint or something to edit your your logo so that it fits within a circular or rectangular sh sort of shape. And I don't have one to use at the moment, so I'll click skip. There's a type of a bio. Now, this is again, kind of sounds like okay, describe yourself. I'm a person. I'm going to upload my photo. No, think about it in terms of this is for my business. So, what would I fill into these various boxes or spaces? that is relevant about my business. I have 160 characters to write a biography about uh, my business. And the importance of this, as we will see, is, well, ultimately, all of the social media that I set up, it, I'm not using it to like share something fun or funny uh, or, um, or you know, trivial. These words are too harsh, but what I mean is we've got the aspects of social media for business and for personal. And the personal stuff is totally valid. Go ahead and share funny pictures and memes and, and, and videos and all of that. That's totally fine. For business, there is a fine line uh, that you need to walk about. Uh, who's my target audience? Who am I trying to reach? What's my product? Um, 
so something like this, describe yourself, um, this is about the business. So I might not have the full idea just yet, but I'll write San Diego Bakery. And I would say to something like this, you want to write as much as you can to fill up the space they give you. I'm not saying right now, but I'm saying by the time of the deadline, you want to fill in a biography. And the idea is write as much as you can about what the business is, what the product is, who's your target audience. <clears throat> because as we will see, when people use the network, you're going to think in terms about possible customers. When people use the network, how will they find me? And if my profile shows up in a list of 20 results, maybe this is going to be something super important for me to stand out compared to my other 19 competitors. Because I'm not going to be the only lawyer or real estate agent uh, or bakery or surf shop or family owned restaurant. Well, I'm saying, well, I, I'm, you know, a, a vegan organic uh, pet, uh, pet food shop. Sure, but your competitors might have enough of a crossover with you that if you just say, you know, the best pet food in San Diego, uh, well, why don't I go to Petco or PetSmart or Nancy's Pet Shop or whatever? So there's a spot right here to write something relevant about your business. This is enough for the moment, but I'll come back to it to fill it in better. And I'll click Next. Okay, so then we've got a whole spot about interests. Select some topics you're interested in to help personalize your Twitter experience, starting with finding people to follow. So all of this social networking, to some degree, is a popularity contest in terms of the more followers that I have, the better. But not as an ego boost, as a potential audience, as potential customers. Um, so think about social media in the, in the old days, in the Stone Age, which is uh, without computers. Social media without computers was marketing, was TV shows, was radio ads, was newspaper ads. Um, marketing in the real world was commercials. Uh, social media for a business is sort of a new avenue for commercials, for advertising. But there, it's modern and interesting and it's animated and it has sound and it's jokey or whatever. But social media is just an extension of classic marketing, advertising, commercials and so forth. So these interests are related to, I need to find an audience that would care about my product. So Victor's Bakery, we're a San Diego bakery. We sell cupcakes and cookies and all the stuff that a bakery does. As I look through these interests, does anything stand out to you that is like a keyword about what my business is? Let's see, music, arts, lifestyle, parenting, travel, government, gaming, nonprofits, fun, science. I don't see any suggestions just yet about, like, what do you think a keyword about my business would be? Victor's Bakery. What is a keyword that stand out to you? Bakery. Okay, that's too obvious. Anything else? Food, baked treats. treats, food. That's the point of here. What if I put in treats? What do I get? Hashtag treats, treats of raw, treats, treats Medusa, treats anime, food, eating, um, what else? Cookies. So I'm putting here some keywords about my business. Treats. Food. Some topics about what my business is so that people can find it, find my business, follow me, ultimately become a customer. And we'll see those concepts in action soon. So I'm still setting up the profile here. And so it suggests, okay, you're interested in these sorts of topics, here's accounts that you can follow. Now, I said earlier that social networking, uh, it, 
to some degree as a business, as a popularity contest in that. If I've got 10 followers, does that mean I have 10 customers? True or false? False. false. Why might that be false? I've got 10 followers. They follow my stuff. They've got to buy my stuff. Why might they not be followers? I mean, why might they not be customers simply being followers? Possibly. I didn't, I didn't reciprocate. I didn't follow back, so then they don't want to buy anything from me. Sure. <clears throat> anything else? Why might a follower not really be a customer? There's a lot of spammers out there. There's a lot of accounts that are just spam bots that are going to follow a thousand accounts, but they're not real. So some of it is just fake uh, accounts, fake traffic. Another possible reason is uh, people are cheap. They want to follow you and see your cool stuff, but then when I buy, when I buy the thing, ah, uh, $10, $5, $100, your thing costs $100, $10, people are very easily swayed to click follow or like or reply or thumbs up or a fun emoji. That's so easy. But then suddenly the mouse gets very hard to use when you click buy. Or suddenly people can't click their device to click the buy button. That's a very common thing that we we just, human nature seems to be that the easier thing is easier. So it's just easier to click a like and I'll come back to it. I'll buy it later. I'll donate to them later. I'll, I'll follow up later. And a lot don't. It's very, very, very low. Like less than 5% of your followers actually then become real customers. So if I've got 10 followers, 5% of 10 is how much? Any math majors in here? Five. Okay, five. So five real customers um, or less um, are really going to buy. So if I have more followers, 100 followers, 1,000 followers, 10,000 followers, then that 5% is, is a lot larger. That 5% is a lot more relevant in terms of I have 1,000 followers, but that doesn't mean I'm making 1,000 sales. That doesn't mean I have 1,000 customers. I have 5% of 1,000. So, um, fifty. You have fifty actual customers, fifty sales, and five percent sounds very low, and that's that's really, really true, especially for those beginning in social media, like a company like Coca Cola or Nike that has you know millions of followers. Yeah, they have lots and lots and lots of sales, but they could always do more. They could always sell more. So here, what's happening is it's suggesting you've chosen these topics. So perhaps follow these accounts. They might follow you back. Because this is one way for you to start to build your own followers. You follow an account, they may follow you back. It doesn't mean they're, they're going to be a customer directly. But they, uh, they at least know you exist. Even though I've had this business on Main Street for 10 years, I just got on Twitter. No one knows I exist. I have to tell people in my shop, hey, we're on Twitter. Don't forget to follow us. And then when I run out of people to tell in the real world, I then have to get people followers on social media. So one way is letting them know I exist. So I'm just going to kind of look here. Uh, I'm going to follow a few of these account accounts. You can always unfollow later. I'm going to go like 10 accounts. I'm going to follow 10 accounts. For some of like the bigger names, they, they're they not going to, like the big famous people usually are not going to follow you back. That's fine. Um, I'm going to Talk about techniques for, for trying to get more followers and such. So I'll follow a few. Notifications, I'm going to skip that. This is just a personal thing. Do you want it to pop up to tell you, you got a new like, you got a new reply, 
Um, I'm already going to have my account set up on my phone probably and I'll get notifications there. I probably don't want even more notifications so I'll skip that. There's a welcome message. Get started. So I'll uh, get to a point over here where I've created this account and um, I'll do a little pause. Did everyone uh, get to some point here either logging into a Twitter account or creating a Twitter account? Anyone need a little help? Once we get up to this point we'll talk about other aspects of this network plus using it. So I created this account and it pops up and it's got you know content and I'm here to uh, I'm here to start using it so um, before I go too far one of the things to be graded upon is your uh, profile that your profile is more complete so if I were to on the left side click profile it would show me this is what people are going to see when they find my account on Twitter either on mobile or the desktop, they will see something like this, an anonymous little person, and then this blank area at the top, any of my business, Victor's Bakery, and then the bio that I wrote, and I have, I'm following six accounts, and I have six followers. So I'm subscribed to six accounts, I'm seeing their tweets, but I have zero followers, zero subscribers. I wanna get that number up, of course. But before I do that, my, my profile is pretty bare, pretty barren it doesn't have much set up and worse yet um, the name of my Twitter account my uh, Twitter address my username is Victor's Bakery 5 so no I want I wanted to say Victor's Bakery not number 5 no one's gonna remember that and at the top that's what that shows there that my Twitter handle my URL my username has a number 5 there so one of the things that happens is if you don't if you don't change it, you might have this name here that's not that great. And that's like your official Twitter name. That's what you put on a business card. That's what you uh, put online. Um, but I don't, I don't want that. So there's a couple of places to edit this. It's kind of annoying. They've separated it into two places. But one place is under this profile. You click Edit Profile, and it takes you back to a spot for you to add your, your logo. So I would add a logo there, and then this header image, some sort of graphic also to show off my business. And the dimensions of, of these images are in the link that I have in the week seven toolbox. There's a link there to go to the official Twitter uh, documentation, and it tells you exactly what the dimensions of those graphics are. So you might wanna set up a graphic that perfectly fits in those areas. And here's a part where I can then change also the name of the business, add to the biography, maybe add a location. Maybe that's relevant. Maybe I'm in San Diego and I want to sell these products that are in San Diego, uh, California. So I would fill in a location. If I have an address, well, I want people to go to my website. When they follow me on Twitter, when they know me about me on Twitter, they see my products and they want to then buy the product on my website. I have their... Uh, a spot to put my link. Well, that didn't show that username that I that I actually want to edit. That's hidden over under more settings. 
right there, username. Okay, I want I want it to say I want my username on Twitter to be Victor's Bakery. The problem is that uh, you cannot use special characters like spaces, apostrophes, and such. So, okay, I'll take away the space. I'll take away the apostrophe. That username has been taken. Please choose another. So this is when we run into this, that some of these names were taken a while ago. These networks have been around at least a decade or more. So it automatically gave me a number five there, that I don't want that. Maybe I want the Victor's Bakery. Well, now I run into the problem that it's got to be maximum 15 characters. What about Victor's Bakery SD for San Diego? Well, that's taken too. So, so because I've already taught you know this lesson several times in other classes, I'm not going to be able to pick a very good name. I've already claimed them all for these other classes. <laughs> so, for myself, I'll just I'm not I'm not going to worry about it. But for yourself, you're going to want to choose a good username there, and there may be another account. What I, one of the things I really don't like about these networks is there's a lot of like abandoned accounts. Someone got the idea to create their, their account and they put Victor's Bakery, but then they haven't used that account in a year or nine years or I don't know. Some of these accounts have just been abandoned and these networks, they have to do a good job about releasing those names back to the people because I, I want that name. I'm going to use it. I'm going to give it a good home and actually use it for my business. And like that other person that hasn't tweeted in two years. So just be aware of that um, for the for the grading you will need to create the account set your username probably better than what it'll give you you need to set your bio photo and header images so that'll be part of the grading I don't I don't want to see a basic account right there you have a whole week to make something look a little nicer another aspect of um, the the grading will be to actually create content. If you were to, if, if you right now, you were to go on your web browser to my account right now, twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery 5, you would see that it's empty. And you would see that it's like, well, why would I follow them? They don't have anything interesting or relevant or funny or any cool pictures. There's no point to follow. So one way to start to get those followers is set up your basic profile, but also create content so that people know what you're tweeting about and then want to follow you and keep up to date with you. The, um, the point of getting these followers is they are potential customers, but just like in the real world, if I don't have a product that people want, they won't buy the product. So digitally here, people won't follow me if I don't have a um, uh, content for people. So. Um, there's a big old tweet button there and I click tweet and you've got the ability to put text pictures links animated gifs polls emojis all of that good stuff and so let's say this is my very first tweet and I will say hello this is my first tweet now is this a good tweet You might say no, but why? It doesn't say anything, it's not relevant. What if a person were visiting my account and they see that there's nothing relevant? If a person visited my account, they probably got there because they were interested in food or treats or a San Diego business or something. They got to my account for some keyword. This tweet then doesn't give them anything of relevancy to the person that visits my account. Hello, this is my first tweet to celebrate get a free cookie on us okay this is perhaps a little better in terms of now there's something relevant for people um, I've got a free offer give a cookie away try to get followers and customers question um, is there like a certain minimum requirement that you should have on your website when you like selling something? Because what if you just have two products? Like, 
It's up to you. The minimum number of products and such for your business, that's up to you. If you if you do have just two products, that's not a problem. Those are the two products you're focusing on to try to sell. So I, I would not say that you have to have a minimum number of products. I would say you have to have a minimum number of tweets or content to get followers, to get people to buy the product, but it doesn't really matter how many products you have. Okay, so this is getting a little better in terms of it has something for people, not just uh, look at this, nothing important, they said hello. This has, okay, I'm new here, my company's new to Twitter, um, you get a free cookie. Now, possible problems, if you think too hard about it is, well, I don't want to give away too many free cookies, and you know, cookies are not free, I have, I have to pay to make cookies, but I don't want to give away too many for free, but giving away free things is a tactic to get more followers, or actually more sales, because um, you know, it's, it's pretty well known that when, when you have these buy one, get one free, or these like 10% off, or you know, buy more, save more, that sort of thing, it, it does work. Um, maybe there are a subset of people that, yeah, give me my free cookie and I'm gone. But other people, they get a free cookie and they see, oh, you've also got this great, uh, you know, raisin uh, muffin and whatever. That seems kind of cool. I'm here already. Maybe I'll add one more item. So free stuff can help. As for then the rest of the tweet, well, you know, it's a little boring in terms of uh, it's not very multimedia rich. And what might I mean by that? Multimedia, what it might it be missing? A picture? an animated graphic, a GIF, uh, a video, something. I've got down here at the bottom to be able to add these things. So even if I don't have a picture of my product, I have here under GIF, I can add, my account has been locked, oops, okay. Um, maybe a good time for a break. So. I could attach a um, an animated GIF of like Cookie Monster eating some cookies. That'll catch people's attention. It's a fun uh, graphic if it's animated and uh, I'm selling my product away and uh, giving my product away and such. So in my case, because again, this is not like a real account. I'm just kind of doing some fake stuff. Your account appears to have exhibited unusual behavior that violates the Twitter rules. Please complete the steps below. Okay, so we're gonna do a little break just for me to try to fix this. But at the very least, make sure you've got your account set up. We'll be back in about 10 minutes. And we'll talk a little bit more about using Twitter. It's 145, we'll be back at 155.